Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going through what I experienced in 2023 and my year in review. Now, my year didn't start out where I'm like, I am going to get on this weight loss journey or I'm going to follow this certain diet. My year started with, I need to figure out what I can do. Because if I go back and look at six years ago, I was at my ideal weight. And I have do, been doing nothing in the last six years except for gain weight. And I needed to figure out what I could do. The doctors weren't helping me. I was getting just general advice. And something needed to change. So I'm going to share all the different things I did this year month by month to help you on your journey. And hopefully some of this can help you. So if you resonate with anything that I'm saying, give me a thumbs up. If you know anyone having some of these same struggles that I've had over the year, share this video with them and share what have you accomplished in 2023? Have you met your goals? How has it been for you? So I want to give you a little bit of background. Like I said, six years ago, I was at my ideal weight. And that would, would take me back to 2018. That year, uh, towards the end of that year, well, I was, we were, I was struggling. Our marriage was struggling. And I ended up separating, moving out with my kids. And then it was in 2019 is when I filed for divorce. And it was that summer of 2019, like everything was going fine. I wasn't having any huge weight issues until the summer of 2019. And it had nothing to do with COVID. It had to do everything with the amount of stress I was under, with the extra work that I was under, with the amount where my ex was on me, like everything was my fault going through back and forth through lawyers and if he had 90 days to have a response he would my lawyer was following up with me on day 88 saying we haven't gotten a response I'm like yeah I know wait till day 89 and that's when you'll get a response and it, I was just racking up bills from lawyers and by that time it, it was over a year of racking up lawyer bills. And so I had the stress from that and having to do extra work. And I was moving I went moved in with my parents for a while, then I found an apartment moved into an apartment, and having these struggles on scheduling and who's running where and who's doing the driving for like a year and a half, uh, just going back and forth through lawyers before everything was finalized. That was a struggle in the, it was really about two and a half years from the time we um, were having marriage problems and separated to the time the divorce was finalized. I had gained 50 pounds and it wasn't from lack of movement or my eating lifestyle because I had been keto, keto bore. I had done intermittent fasting and I was just tired and fed up all the whole year of 2022. I was trying to get on track. I was trying to exercise. I, I was exercising. I was doing all the things. I was asking my doctors when this whole weight loss, uh, weight gain happened. And I'm like, I'm trying to lose weight. What can I do? And I was getting the standard responses drink more water, exercise more, try to get 10,000 steps in. And I'm like, what do you mean get 10,000 steps in? Do you mean 10,000 steps total or add 10,000 steps to the 20,000 steps I'm already doing? Like I was, I was, I was moving. I was exercising. I was lifting weights. I was also stressed out 
more than I realized. And I was just doing all the things and stressing out about things even more. And last year, I was just fed up. I'm like, something needs to change. Something needs to break. And so I decided I was going to take a break from focusing on the exercising. And I was going to look at my meals and my timing of the meals a little bit more. So actually in December, 2022, I had ordered, well, I had ordered it in the summer. I had pre-ordered Fast Like a Girl. And I have lots of different tabs on the book. I started the fasting protocol out of this. Like I went through, I highlighted different things. I really went through this book. I read the book cover to cover in three days as well as highlighted it and did the audiobook. That has been this book is what made me realize a few different things. So I read this book end of December and reread it again in the beginning of January and decided I'm going to start applying some of these principles. And one of the things that was different about this book versus other things that I've read, it was all with fast like a girl, it's going around your cycle and your menstrual cycle and talking about the timing fasting, which I have been doing. But when I was going through the book, I was realizing I probably was not fasting at the appropriate times. Well, I know now I was not fasting at the appropriate times and I wasn't helping my body at all. So I started implementing one of the fasting protocols. It was the immune system reset protocol is what I implemented first. And since everything goes with my cycle, I waited till I had my cycle in January and implemented that protocol. And one of the things I realized when I was going through, not just that I was fasting at the wrong time, I was fasting too much. And not only was I fasting too much, when I say I was fasting too much, not just at the wrong time, so I was fasting too much to the point that I wasn't able to eat enough during my eating window and different times you hear it, especially in carnivore, you hear it all the time. Calories don't matter. They really do. Because if you're like me and you've tried almost every diet out there and you've done the calorie counting, you don't realize when you're full, you might just eat till you're satisfied and think you're full and you haven't really eaten enough because I got to the point where I was following the protocol and then I would go back and check my calories for the week and I was averaging maybe 500 calories a day. That is not fasting appropriately. So I, I did that for a few months. So in January, I started the fasting protocol and then I also ordered a CGM, a continuous glucose monitor. So it was, had the, uh, put it in my arm and it would measure my glucose levels. And I learned, I, d I did that plan for three months because, and this is December, beginning of January is a great time to order those because they're going on sale. Everyone's thinking about their health. And that is when they, I've, that's when I've noticed I've had the biggest sales. So that's when I ordered it last year is in January. It was one of the last days of the sale that they were having for the new year special. And I started wearing one of those. 
All right, so my main takeaways for January is I started reading Fast Like a Girl, Regret It, implemented one of the fasting protocols, the immune system reset fast because I was getting sick all the time. And so I'm like, I need to boost my immune system. So I did the immune system refet, reset fast, started that in January. And in January, I also started wearing a CGM. February, I continued the same fasting protocol that I started in January, continued that and restarted that with my cycle again in February. And then I was tracking everything with my CGM. I was recording my food when I was doing having food. I was recording my exercise, what type of exercise. I was recording uh, when I was using the sauna to measure my stress and insulin levels there. I was also starting to monitor anytime I had stressful events because I noticed that I had a conflict resolution call that I had to do through work and I had noticed that my, I had a glucose spike and I'm like, I didn't eat, I didn't drink. Like what happened around such and such a time when this spike happened? And I realized, oh, this was my conflict call meeting that I had and I was nervous about it. But when it happened, it was, it everything heightened and I had more of those types of calls later on the following weeks. And I would try to exercise afterwards or exercise beforehand, trying to figure out different ways I could help level those, those spikes. I didn't want to have those spikes. So that's one of the things I started doing in February. I was also testing different types of foods. So I had the CGM. I'm like, I am going to test this food. I am going to test that food and see what foods give me spikes and raise my uh, blood sugars. And I had some things that were surprising and some things that weren't so surprising. Uh, I've had different people that say you can't have this or you can't have that or they're more sensitive to certain sugar substitutes. So I was testing those types of different things. I was having some I was having a lot of fun with the CGM. I have to say, I would recommend anyone who gets one for the first time to do three months just because it was fun testing things. By the third month, I had more things figured out and it was more of a reflection and looking at different things. But uh, another thing I did in February is for Lent, my daughters and I, all did the beef butter bacon eggs challenge. We're doing through the whole Lent season. So that started in February and we did it through Easter. So that was another thing. And I was able to, with the CGM, be able to monitor how the food, <laughs> what the different uh, foods did. And then once I went on beef butter bacon eggs, it got boring because everything was just leveled out. So I'm glad I had like, a month of seeing the different spikes and testing out the different foods in January because uh, February was pretty boring but I did have but that was the end of February with beef butter bacon eggs so it was more March where I had more realizations on other things other than food that were giving me insulin spikes as well as not just the conflict calls right and then in March, I switched my fasting protocol to the advanced fasting protocol, which gave me a larger eating window because I was still struggling to eat enough. <laughs> Believe it or not, I it's one of those times where I realized not only was I fasting too much, I was fasting too much too long. I can't, when I always say for too long, for too many years or months. Um, and I have gotten to the point now that I'm, 
I track my fasting every once in a while, but I'm not following a fasting schedule. But with the different fasting protocols, I have learned a lot about fasting with my cycle and knowing when not to fast, which was typically the tight the days that I would before be fasting and fasting the longest, which was not the best time to fast. And now knowing that, I just say I learned a lot with that book. So I found I wasn't eating enough, changed my fasting protocols. And then I was also finding out, this is in March, I'm finding out with the CGM as I'm monitoring, like I said, I was monitoring my workouts and I was finding out when I did cardio workouts or high intensity cardio workouts, it would raise my, uh, it, my, my levels would raise and they wouldn't go down like they're supposed to or what you're told they're, they're going to do. So I found out that doing the cardio was putting more stress on my body than helping it. And then I tried doing some weight training and the weight training helped out. And I could see the weight training would bring my levels down or even my levels out. And another thing that helped was using the sauna. So I was using the sauna or weight training and doing that on and off. I would do the weight training twice a week and then the sauna twice a week. I think that's kind of where I have with my goals now, why I started with the sauna twice a week. So that's what was working really well when I had the CGM back in March. And with go, being on beef, butter, bacon, eggs, all my food thing, everything was pretty leveled out. I wasn't having any spikes. So that went well, continued that through March. It wasn't until April that um, we finished the beef, butter, bacon, eggs challenge. And so March, everything was still pretty steady. And I had still back and forth as far as my weight hasn't been gaining or losing much. Then in April, the beef, butter, bacon, eggs challenge, we ended it on Easter, which was on the 9th. And my biggest realization from that, my daughters, one lost 20 pounds, one lost 10 pounds. I had lost five. I'm like, I have the most weight to lose and I only lost five pounds. So that is when I sat back and I was really reflecting on what I had learned in January, February, and March. Having the CGM, following a fasting protocol, following, um, I was even following like the suggested meal plans along with uh, my cycle for January, February, and right up until started the beef, butter, bacon, eggs. And when I got done with beef, butter, bacon, eggs, my biggest thing that I missed was cheese. I remember that because it was Easter. Like I came home from um, our meal at Easter. I didn't, I didn't eat a whole lot because after being on beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, I didn't want to just take the day and eat whatever because I knew I would be sick. And if I wanted to get sick, I would want to do that at home, not at someone's house. So I remember coming home the day of Easter and eating a brick of cheese. And just being like, oh, this is so, so amazing. I miss this so much. And it's amazing how things have changed over the months. That cheese was like a huge staple and I really missed it. And as of right now, I'm not missing it. <laughs> so just how things have changed o o over time. It, it's kind of weird reflecting and sitting back. So in April, I spent time reflecting, especially when I'm sitting there looking at, I'd only lost five pounds 
on beef butter bacon eggs. Uh, and the beef butter bacon eggs was the only weight I had lost so far at this point in the year. And this is in April. So we're in month four. I've lost five pounds and only while doing the beef butter bacon eggs for those six weeks. It was maybe seven weeks. So in April, I decided I was going to start doing some strength training since I had looked at that was what was helped me that as far as not raising my glucose levels and helping my glucose levels level out or um, or come, come back to normal if they were raised. So I started doing weightlifting three times a week and then following a fasting plan. In May, everything changes in May. Uh, school is ending. Uh, the, we are usually done um, one of the first couple weeks of May with our homeschool group. The weather is warmer. It's my daughter's birthday. I have more time and availability to exercise. My schedule is changing. I am able to spend more time outdoors. And so I was continuing my strength training and I continued a fasting plan, but I was, this time when I was doing my fasting plan, I was being more aware of the needs of certain supplements I needed through the times of my cycles. And at the end of May, I had no weight loss. I, nothing. So obviously I was frustrated that here we are five months in, I've only lost five pounds. All of that five pounds was while I was doing beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And so going into June, I continued exercising and I continued a fasting plan and during the month of June, I kept hearing more things. And it was probably because I just finished beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And that was the only time I had lost weight. I was hearing more things about carnivore and the benefits of carnivore. And with that, I was seeing I was gaining weight each week in June, which was more frustrating to me. Now, by the end of June, I had gained back those five pounds that I lost doing the beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. So at the end of June, I was right back to where I was at the beginning of January. After six months of fasting and watching what I ate and exercising and I was I was fed up so around the middle of June I decided I was going to try carnivore so I kept hearing so many things about it but I'm like I guess I'm so fed up I have been almost at that point I was almost six months and gotten nowhere and the only thing the only time I saw results was while I did beef, butter, bacon, eggs, which I'm like, was even more strict than carnivore. So I might as well try carnivore. So towards the end of June, I was mentally preparing and I decided I need to record my journey for this carnivore that I'm going to do for a few months and see what, what happens. I, my plan was I was going to do it for July and August. So I decided I was going to record my journey on YouTube. That's here we are today. And if you're watching my channel, you most likely know I did not stop doing carnivore. So in July, I started carnivore. And wow, I have every week recorded, I started with different challenges. 
and my first challenge was the sardine challenge where I did a three day start sardine fast the first three days of carnivore. For me, I think that was a great choice to get started and jumpstart my journey. And by the end of July, I was down 10 pounds. Now, when I was June, I was just, I was frustrated, right? I had the only five pounds that I had lost, I had gained back. So here in July, I had lost 10 pounds. And I'm so like, that has been amazing. And I felt better. However, I was listening to other carnivores and I wasn't feeling as great as they were. And there were a few things that kept coming back that made me decide I wanted to get my thyroid checked. I had asked previous years for doctors to test my thyroid and the results came back normal. Well, I decided to do a full thyroid panel in August. I think I actually ordered the test in July. But with July, I was so thrilled that I was able to do, I didn't really do any exercising. I was just trying to make sure I was getting steps and movement in. And I lost 10 pounds. Now at the end of July, I went on a vacation I had a little mix up. I remember that. I remember I had pizza and I was regretting it. And I have a video about that because I gained a little bit, but then I lost it. And so in August, overall in August, I didn't have any weight loss. However, I lost two inches. Oh, and that's another thing. In July, I had lost four inches. So in July, I lost 10 pounds and four inches. And in August, I didn't lose any weight, but I lost two inches and I had my thyroid tested and I did the full panel, did it at home. And I got the results that I, my, my thyroid, my TSH was normal, which that was the only thing the other doctors tested it was all my other levels were not showing that they were normal. So it was suggested that I do an autoimmune protocol which I was already on carnivore. So I decided I was going to do a carnivore autoimmune protocol. And that was, it was a few days before the 1st of September, but just to keep it easy, as of September, I decided to soon do the carnivore autoimmune protocol, which meant no dairy. And I really thought I was going to miss my cheese and I still haven't missed my cheese. And then I couldn't have eggs. Eggs are normally anti-inflammatory, but for those people with thyroid issues, they can be inflammatory. And sometimes it's the egg yolks that are inflammatory, and sometimes it's the egg whites that are inflammatory. So it all depends on uh, each individual person. Now that was a struggle that I struggled with not having eggs those first couple weeks. And then it got better. But those first couple weeks in September, I was going through a detox. And with that detox, I don't know how anyone from the standard American diet could do an autoimmune protocol because I had so many things already eliminated by doing carnivore that when I went to eliminate the few sugar substitutes that I was having, I had my element packets that have the Splenda, or stevia. And then I have, I was, had some dairy, mainly butter and some cheese. I had to eliminate that. And then eggs were my big thing and seasonings. I couldn't have any seasonings because every one of my seasonings pretty much all had a nightshade in it. And that was really tough. So my, the detox I went through, I was extremely tired. I was sleeping 10 to 12 hours 
and I was taking naps during the day, I was moody. I think that lasted about two weeks. I was moody and I was emotional. I was on like an emotional roller coaster. Someone could say something to me and all of a sudden I am happy. And then all of a sudden I'm crying. And then I had no idea. And there was times I started crying and I'm like, I don't even know why I'm crying. And then I was getting even more upset. It was, it was insane. I, 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 I really struggled with that, but the emotions like leveled out after about two weeks. I didn't need the naps after a couple weeks. By the end of the month, I was just sleeping. I was still sleeping uh, probably 10 to 12 hours. I mean, I was sleeping quite a bit at night, but I wasn't needing the naps. And that was like, that was like my biggest thing. And that was my biggest struggle for September was going through that detox and man, I did miss eggs. I, I missed eggs. All right. So in September with going through that detox, eliminating the eggs and the dairy and the sugar substitutes, I had lost six pounds and I had lost five inches, which woo, was awesome. And then comes October, the beginning of October is where I was at my all time lowest weight of the year. And what happens after I weigh in in October? What was it? Just a few days later, I fractured my foot, which meant I was in a boot and crutches and not getting my steps in. My kids were waiting on me and I was eating out of boredom. And during the month of October, I also had a work trip. So I wasn't getting steps in and sitting. That was, that was another stressful event, trying to figure out how to pack for that and make sure I have everything and wondering how far I was going to have to walk from the parking lot to the hotel and where I was going to have to walk to the conference rooms in the hotel. I was worried about that for a few weeks. So in October, movement sucked. I'm in a boot. My foot's fractured. I'm traveling. I gained three pounds and I gained five inches, which doesn't sound as bad as I thought it was going to end up being. <laughs> so overall, nah, it, it wasn't great. But by the end of October, I was feeling better. And I do feel that because I was on the carnivore autoimmune protocol, I wasn't eating any inflammatory foods. And I feel that that was helping with my healing because when I went back to the doctor at the beginning of November, in November, I was able to get out of the boot and just use the boot if I was outside needing to get around. And so I was retraining all over, trying to get back into the steps. I could tell even my hips and stuff were not aligned anymore by the time I was out at the boot. Uh, I, one, my leg would get sore and be restless, but working my way back in. In November, I had gained three pounds, but I had lost eight inches. <laughs> so, and I know uh, on my, one of my last videos I talked about, you no. Know, gaining and different people are like, well, exercise and do this and do cardio. I'm like, you know what? I, I know that the cardio isn't going to work for me, but I lost inches. So it, it all evens out. I was happy with the eight inches being lost and I was just happy to be able to be moving around. And I think that was another thing that shocked my body is I was doing a lot more movement and I was 
working my way up. Now, I felt like I was having to work my way back up to 10,000 steps, but I was working my way up there. And every day I could get more steps in, I felt so much better. All right. And then here we are in December. And I lost a little bit as of right now. We're not at the very end yet. But as of now, I've lost a little bit. I'm down 13 pounds for the year, which if I'm look, if I go back and look at like last year, 2022, I didn't lose anything. And the previous years I gained every year. So to lose 13 pounds, I consider that a success. I learned so much more about my body and how I react. Even when, when I know my cycle is about to start, I know uh, on those days that I'm weighing in, I know about what weeks are going to hit where I'm going to gain, be gaining more because of where I am in my cycle and what my body needs and where my hormone levels are. And I just know that. And having that information and not getting worked up about gaining two or three pounds one week is so much more relief to me than it was last year. So I feel so much better and so in such better control of my future than I have in the past. And I feel like I have a better understanding. Now, with what I've learned, oh, I guess I also didn't uh, mention in November, I guess it's actually December, I, in November, I took my results for the autoimmune protocol uh, for the hypothyroidism again, and my numbers were normal. My numbers, they had all leveled out after following the carnivore autoimmune protocol. And so December, I have felt freedom being able to start adding in a different food each week. And that's been great. Now I'm going to be doing another uh, blood tests and test all my hormone levels, or not hormone levels, uh, thyroid panel, a full thyroid panel again in uh, three months to see if they're still leveled out. But my big thing this year is I was able to figure out what I've been struggling with for so long. And I've been able to reverse that through my eating I was able to stay off medication. I had I, different struggles with the boot and the mobility. And another takeaway uh, that I've learned this year was with the hypothyroidism, a lot of it is stress induced. Okay, so looking back over like five years ago when I was going through uh, dealing with lawyers and divorce and like, this is all making sense where this would have all come into play. And one of the recommendations has been, you know, this is talking about more about meditating and taking better care of your mental health. And one of the first suggestions people give is about meditating and taking care of your mental health, they'll tell you to do yoga. And I can't, I, I cannot do yoga. Yoga stresses me out. I cannot stand sitting in a pose. I can't be in a pose and not moving for any length of time and not be thinking about all the things I could be doing if I wasn't in this pose. So yoga stresses me out. I get more frustrated with yoga. But I did find just in the last month, somatic exercises. And I feel like they're similar to yoga, slow movement, had, concentrating on breathing and stretching. And that's one of my goals is to implement more of those types of exercises to help me 
um, relax and help reduce stress because that is part of the issue with hypothyroidism uh, on top of all the different um, food things and hormones and so that has been a really big eye-opener for me this year so that is my wrap for 2023 and my journey and where I've been and what got me here and looking forward I'm planning on staying meat-based. Uh, as I said, I'm planning on doing somatic exercises, incorporating some of that to help with stress and see how that goes. And hopefully my story for 2024 is I'm improving my health and getting some of this weight off that I've been gaining for the last five to six years. And hopefully you can join me on this journey. Again, if you found any of this information useful, give me a, a thumbs up. If you know anyone else has gone through this journey or is having some of these same frustrations that I've had, share this video with them. I'm gonna have the timestamps below of where for you can skip the different months and I'm going to put, have behind it what I was working on or what I was introducing for during those months. So you can skip around to the different months in the video versus having to watch the whole video from beginning to end. All right. Well, I hope to see you in 2024 as we continue this journey.